Alright, so for the past couple of months, I've been having some really weird issues with my desktop PC. It started with the USB ports, like sometimes devices would get randomly disconnected. But the problems seems to be getting worse and the most recent one is that the PC crashes and shows a blue screen with a stop code of WHEA uncorrectable error. And my initial reaction to this was that it might be the motherboard, RAM or the GPU that is going bad. But it turns out it was none of them. And you guys will be surprised to see that all of the blue screens and issues with the USB ports were being caused by one faulty component. Okay, so to get a little context to the situation, this is my main workstation PC that I built back in 2019. And this is where I edit all the videos that go up on the channel. As for the specifications, it's got a Ryzen 9 3900X 12 core CPU, RTX 3070, 64 gigabytes of RAM, two NVMe SSDs, and two mechanical hard drives. The motherboard is MSI Meg X570 Ace, and all of this is powered by a one kilowatt Corsair RM1000X power supply. And this PC is running at stock settings with XMP enabled, so there is no overclocking applied to the CPU or GPU. Secondly, the PC does not overheat, runs nice and cool even when it's under load. And also we are running the latest BIOS for the motherboard. And with these settings, everything used to work flawlessly. But for the past couple of days, I've noticed that the PC crashes and shows a blue screen with a stop code of WHEA uncorrectable error. Now one important thing to note is that this happens only when I'm playing a game. If the PC is idle or if I'm doing something like web browsing or watching a video, everything works fine. Also, the blue screen doesn't always happen. At times the game just quits without any errors. So one thing to note here is that the game crashes and blue screens only happen when the PC is under load. So this behavior is a typical symptom of unstable overclocking. But in our case, we have not overclocked the system. So something else is causing all of these issues. The second issue is with the USB ports. Devices like the keyboard and the mouse gets randomly disconnected for about a second and then come back on. This would only happen once in a while while I was rendering videos in DaVinci Resolve or when I was playing video games. Also, things like portable hard drives behave erratically. Whenever I would plug them in, they would make a weird clicking noise as you can hear from this clip. Now you may think that the USB port or the cable might be faulty, but the thing is, this happens on every USB ports of the PC. And not to mention, the drive works perfectly fine on my laptop. No clicking noise or any disconnection issues. Now, one very important thing to note here is that the clicking noise only happens with drives that draw their power from the PC. But drives that have external power source like a power brick works perfectly fine. Actually, any USB device that has an external power source like a battery or an adapter works perfectly fine on this PC. The only USB devices that malfunction are the ones that draw their power from the PC's USB port. So these symptoms usually means that the USB port is not able to supply enough power. And this might be the source of all of our issues that we are having with the USB ports, including the random disconnect that we are facing on the keyboard and the mouse. So to diagnose the USB issues, I bought one of these power meters and plugged it into one of the USB ports. And what do you know, the voltage is actually quite low. 4.5 volts when nothing is plugged in is, yeah, a little bit on the lower side. And yes, it is the same with the rear USB ports. The voltage is just too low. Ideally, it should be around 5.1 to 5.2 volts. And we can confirm that with my laptop. As you can see, it outputs 5.2 volt on its USB port, which is normal. Now, there can be two possible factors that can affect the voltage of the USB port. Number one, there can be an issue with the motherboard. It might not be able to supply enough voltage or current to the USB ports to keep the devices going. Or number two, the power supply might be on its way out. And I guarantee you, in 99.9% .9 of the cases, it is going to be the power supply. And if it is the power supply, that also might be the source of all of our blue screens. 
So you guys see how all of these problems are interconnected. So now we know that we are having low voltage issues with our USB ports. To diagnose if it's the motherboard or the power supply, we need to check if the power supply is supplying the correct voltages. To check, you can use a free utility called HW Monitor. Sadly, it's not 100% accurate. Ideally, you should be using a multimeter. But if you don't have a multimeter on hand, this will give you a rough idea of what's going on. So right away you can see that the 5 volt rail is reading only 4.6 volts and the 12 volt rail is at 11.9 volts and this is when the PC is idle. And after running a game for about 5 minutes, you can see that the 12 volt rail has dipped down to 11.3 volts. This is actually out of the ATX specification. I've also noticed the LEDs above the power input of the GPU flash. So you can see it happen in a more GPU intensive game. So these indicate that the graphics card is not able to get enough power. So that right there is a straight up indication that something is up with the power supply. So finally, let's confirm the voltages using a multimeter. Alright, so please excuse the mess, but I've got my multimeter hooked up to one of these Molex connectors and I really wanted to measure the voltages on the PCIe cables, but it seems impossible for me to film and hold the multimeter probes on the PCIe connector because they don't really fit inside. This should not be an issue because this is a single 12 volt rail power supply. And speaking of the power supply, this is the Corsair RM1000X. You also might have noticed that I've got a set of these aftermarket PSU extension cables. Now I don't think these are causing any problem because I've been using them for about 2 years and never had an issue. But just to be on the safe side, we will measure the voltages using original cables that came with the power supply. Anyways, another thing to note here is that the cables are black, so at first glance you won't know which is ground and positive. But it's easy to figure out. I've got the connector oriented in a way that the notches are facing upwards. The wire going to the extreme left is your 12 volts and the two middle wires are the ground. So this is how you should insert your multimeter probes. And this is how it looks like if you compare with a power supply that has got yellow, black and red wires. The yellow is plus 12 volts, black is ground and red is 5 volts. Lastly, set your multimeter to measure DC and the range to 20 volts. Okay, I've got the PC powered on and the multimeter is reading 11.9 volts which is the exact same reading the HW monitor is showing. So this is when the PC is idle. Now, once we put a little load on the power supply is when we can see the 12 volt rail dip down to 11.3 volts, which if you remember is the same reading the HW monitor was showing. Now this is just barely out of the ATX specification and should not cause a crash. But you gotta keep in mind that I've also got these extension cables. So these will also cause a slight voltage drop. So this might be the reason why those LEDs were flashing on the GPU. And this is also the cause of all the instability. At this point, I'm not gonna even bother measuring the 5 volt rail because it is the power supply. So my conclusion is the power supply outputs slightly lower than normal voltage under load. And this combined with the extension cables are the cause for system instability. But I am quite sure that there is some issue with the power supply. So time for a new power supply and I will show you what the voltages should actually look like. Alright guys, the new power supply is here. And this time I've bought the HX750 from Corsair. It's a fully modular 80 plus platinum unit. Really one of the best you can get in the market. And I really like their new design, looks stunning. And this time I've gone with a 750 watt unit over 1 kilowatt because I want to save some money and moreover the Ryzen 9 3900X along with the RTX 3070 will not pull more than 500 watts even after overclocking. So this 750 watts power supply is more than enough, not to mention it's 80 plus platinum. And along with the power supply, I also got these sleeved PSU cables at 50% discount. The package looks as if it has been opened before, which is kind of disappointing, although they do look new from the inside. Now, one big advantage of getting these is that these are not extension cables. 
these are gonna run directly from the power supply straight to the components thereby eliminating an extra joint okay so i've got everything hooked up and this is still temporary because i've still got the extension cables that were attached to the old power supply i really want to see if the pc blue screens because of these cables i've also got my multimeter hooked up and you can see it is reading a solid 12 volts so that is good Alright so I've got Doom Eternal running so the system is under load and you can see the multimeter is still reading a solid 12 volts. But most importantly the game has been running for more than an hour and I've had zero system instability or any blue screens. And also the keyboard and the mouse both are working fine so no more random disconnection issues. So this is perfect. This is how the PC should actually run. So let me quickly sort this mess out and I will finally test out the USB ports. Oh and very important, the LEDs above the 6 pin PCIe connector on the graphics card are no longer flashing while gaming. That indicates the graphics card is getting the correct voltages. Awesome. Alright guys, it has been 2 days since the power supply swap and so far everything is working fine. No more blue screens or any issues with the keyboard and the mouse. And most importantly, my portable USB hard drive now actually works, so no more clicking noises. This is because the USB port now outputs the proper voltage, which you can see from the USB power meter. And I've also added a little voltage meter so that we can measure the voltage the power supply outputs. And these are fairly cheap and are easily available on Amazon. So if you want, you can buy one yourself. Alright, so my concluding thoughts are, all of the issues like the blue screens, USB instability, including games crashing onto the desktop were being caused by a faulty power supply. You know, it's insane to think that the game crashing straight onto the desktop was being caused by the power supply. But yeah, it is what it is. So, if you are having issues like these, it's most likely the power supply or the cables. Which brings me to another point. Please don't buy these PSU extension cables. Get a good quality sleeve cable from a reputed brand like Corsair and buy a cable that runs from the power supply straight to your components. Extension cables usually have a joint and these will further decrease the voltages. Lastly, another thing I have learned is that even the best of the power supplies can actually go bad. I mean the Corsair RM1000X is an 80 plus gold unit. And it was quite expensive, but thankfully it's got 10 years warranty, so I will eventually RMA this. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. If you have found this video to be helpful, make sure to hit the thumbs up button because that helps out a lot. And also subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.